Well, hello again. It is Ken Colson here from Creation Unfolding, and this is part two of our discussion about soft tissues found in dinosaur remains. In part one, we uh, discussed the long-term preservation of these soft tissues, and we determined that, scientifically speaking, dinosaur soft tissues, DNA, and proteins just should not exist in dinosaur remains after hundreds of millions of years. Now, recently, a new model has emerged that challenges this assumption. The scientific study that serves as the basis for the model was published in 2018 by Weirman et al. Now, proponents of this model suggest that original soft tissues can in fact survive deep time if exposed to something called post-mortem glycoxidation and or lipoxidation. Now, these biochemical relationships or these reactions, they're not new and are presently at work in our bodies, alternating and changing our DNA and our proteins into something called advanced glycoxidation end products and advanced lipoxidation end products or ages and ales. So what are ages and ills? Well, simplistically speaking, sugars and lipids found within our tissues can bind to the amino acids that make up our proteins. When they do this, it is called cross-linking. These new molecules essentially replace the original amino acids, altering the structure of the protein as a whole, causing it to become hard and brittle. And it's for this reason that doctors warn humans about consuming age and ale rich foods. You guessed it, burgers, fries, processed foods, etc. Now it turns out that glycoxidation and lipoxidation reactions can occur even after an organism dies. And this is called non-enzymatic glycoxidation and or lipoxidation because the chemical reaction occurs without the aid of enzymes which are peculiar to living organisms. In other words, dead tissues can continue to change after death. Given the right conditions, ages and ales can replace large fractions of original tissues, leaving behind a scaffold that resembles the original organic molecule. Think of a bone that has been turned into solid rock. What's left is the shape of the bone, but not the actual bone itself. Is it any wonder then that those antagonistic of creationism are now sort of turning to this model to explain soft tissue preservation over deep time? Consider these remarks from a recent social uh, media post on this topic. No soft tissue has ever been found. What has been found are chemical protein remnants. Now, even the popular science media have been convinced. Uh, the, the title of a live science article discussing ages and ales, for example, reads, Controversial T-Rex Tissue Find Finally Explained. So what are creationists to make of these claims? Well, spoiler alert here. Although the research on ages and ales is robust, in other words, yes, these mechanisms are real, but the application of these mechanisms uh, to preservation of all soft tissues in all dinosaur bones over deep time is not. In other words, if we only find one example, just one example of soft tissue preserved in dinosaur bones without the aid of glycoxidation and or lipoxidation, then all bets are off. And of course, that's precisely what we do find, and we're gonna discuss that a little later. But first, let's take a look at some of the research associated with ages and ales, and talk about some of the data that uh, those opposed to creationism tend not to talk about. Now, in the study conducted by William and et al., the researchers demonstrated that these altered dinosaur soft tissues lacked elasticity. Hmm. A property conferred to tissues by organic elastin. Now, not only were they not elastic, they were actually quite brittle. 
And this shouldn't really surprise us since according to uh, the research article's supplementary material, at least 50% to as much as about 80%, even more of the original dinosaur proteins were in fact replaced by these ages and ales. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means that although ages and ales can mimic the shape of the, the tissues, they cannot mimic the role of the tissues they replace. The very brittle nature of the proteins in these other tissues is therefore diagnostic of uh, tissue-wide lipoxidation and or lipoxidation. Yet not all dinosaur fossil tissues are brittle and fragile. There are multiple examples of dinosaur soft tissues that retain almost perfect elasticity. And these uh, samples are usually also clear or whitish, a fact that according to Weeman et al. suggests a reducing environment not suitable for the formation of ages and ales. Multiple examples of soft, flexible, pliable, and even clear soft tissues liberated from dinosaur bones can be found in many of those papers authored by Mary Schweitzer and her team, uh, starting in about the late 1990s all the way to the present. Consider this paper published just this year in 2020. In this paper, Schweitzer and her team found soft tissues in clear cartilage from an 80 million year old duckbill dinosaur. Now, alluding to the non-oxidative state of the cartilage, um, the team say, unlike dinosaur osteocytes that often present a reddish hue due to iron inclusions, hypercosaurus chondrocytes are transparent, suggesting a different preservation mode. In other words, glycoxidation and lipoxidation, which are oxidative reactions, were not involved in the preservation of these soft tissues. No ages and no ales. But it gets even more interesting. Not only did the team find soft tissues, they found short chains of DNA at least six base pairs long, but perhaps even longer. This is stunning. According to actualistic studies, DNA should be broken down into single base pairs after only 130,000 years in dry conditions at low temperatures of about 15 degrees centigrade. Now, since this dinosaur lived and died in an environment that experienced temperatures of about 30 degrees centigrade, and since it was originally buried in thousands of feet of sediment that experienced a high geothermal gradient of about 30 degrees centigrade per 3,000 feet, the DNA should only have lasted hundreds of years at most, perhaps a few thousand years. Now, this is a perfect example of dinosaur soft tissues that have been unaffected by ages and ales. But this is just one of a multitude of examples. Although old, the visuals from the 1997 60 Minute program on Mary Schweitzer's original find really says it all. Notice that the flesh is not only stretchy, but it is also whitish. Two properties that according to Weeman et al. are diagnostic for a reducing non-oxidative environment, one in which ages and ales don't form. Now there are so many examples of soft, flexible, pliable dinosaur tissues out there in the literature that it sort of astounds me that so many of those antagonistic to creationism and even the media can't see the forest for the trees. Ages and ales, yes, they are real. But since they are not ubiquitous to all dinosaur soft tissues, we must come full circle and once again be constrained by the science. And the science still says no. Uh, labile soft tissues cannot preserve through deep time. Now, as it turns out, the study by Weeman et al., although strongly suggesting that some dinosaur soft tissues can be replaced by ages and ales, has some not so obvious limitations. First, the sample number for Mesozoic fossils producing soft tissues was extremely small. A total of four Mesozoic animals produced soft tissues. Now, that's a good start for a scientific study, 
but it by no means should displace the reams of data that already exists, most of which continues to say no. Second, even though glycoxidation and or lipoxidation alter the structure of proteins, they still retain long chains of original amino acids that are susceptible to hydrolysis. That just means that the bonds between amino acids, they break down very easily with water. Proponents of the age ale model suggest that the age and ales can sort of confer some level of stability to these adjacent amino acids. Yet dinosaur bones were buried in a hot Mesozoic climate, most likely at temperatures between 33 and 38 degrees centigrade. And not only that, but eventually these bones reached uh, almost 10,000 foot depths in North American basins where the geothermal gradient increased temperatures to perhaps as high as 100 degrees centigrade. Certainly, unaltered tissues are not going to last very long at all in this kind of an environment. And really, that should be the end of the story. But what about these uh, altered by ages and ales? Where is the data that suggests that these proteins can survive 200 million years in saturated environments where the temperatures reach upwards of 100 degrees centigrade? Well, there isn't any. And to my third point, Weeman et al. were able to induce glycoxidation and lipoxidation in modern ostrich tissue. These modern soft tissues accumulated ages and ales extremely rapidly. Now, this suggests that ages and ales replace normal amino acids at a measurable rate. If ostrich tissue can be significantly altered by ages and ales in just a few months, then shouldn't tissues that are over 100 million years old have been completely replaced by ages and ales long, long ago? It's astonishing that any of the original amino acids remain at all. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget that uh, there is a blog I have, creationunfolding.com. I have a Facebook page. I've got the rest of the videos here on YouTube, uh, and I'll be adding more continually. But also, I have a book, um, Creation Unfolding, A New Perspective on X Nihilo. So look out for that on Amazon. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.